Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. A Tasmanian man with a longing to see the world has had the trip of a lifetime end in tragedy. 77-year-old Kenneth Reese died while swimming in the Grand Canyon in the United States. He's being remembered by his family as an adventurer who loved to travel. Myra Penning remembers her brother Kenneth as the big fella, tall with a big heart and a big desire to see the world. But she had reservations about what would be his final trip to the Grand Canyon. When he went, you sort of just felt, should he be doing this? And I think all the family felt the same way. Park rangers found Mr Reese near Deer Creek Falls in the Colorado River. A rescue team was unable to resuscitate the 77-year-old. An autopsy suggests he may have had a heart attack in the water. Which I hope he did because he wouldn't have gone through the trauma then of drowning. Born in the Scottish Highlands, Myra and Kenneth immigrated to Georgetown in 1952. He worked at what was then Kamauka at Bell Bay before retiring to Lilydale. His want to see the world was unwavering. He did what he wanted to do and he enjoyed it, so what can you say? Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Fire crews have managed to save a restaurant and takeaway business in the state south after a blaze destroyed an adjoining unit next door. The owner witnessing the scene from his shop in Snug with the cause still yet to be determined. A scene of panic. <coughs> Billowing smoke and flames tearing through this Snug unit seen just here behind Fung's Vietnamese food. The restaurant and takeaway shop owner says he saw the occupants racing out of their home and quickly followed. We got out of there very quickly and they told us the house was on fire and I had a quick look in the corner and I could see a lot of fire. Alerted by a triple zero call from one of the residents, crews arrived at the scene at around 12.30. The Tasmania Fire Service says there was no indication of any working smoke alarms. We didn't hear any smoke alarms activating when we arrived. That's not to say that the fire didn't already damage those because the building was substantially on fire when we arrived on scene. It took four crews from the southern region just 20 minutes to contain the blaze and stop the flames from spreading to the adjoining shop, minimising the damage. Shop next door at this stage seems to be smoke damage. The fire doesn't seem to have penetrated into the uh, building next door. We'll have wages losses, you know, we'll have, yeah, like loss of business for a long time, yeah, until we can get it repaired. No one was injured during the incident. Ruby Kamane, 7 Tasmania News. We turn now to the weather situation with authorities warning the worst could be to come for the eastern and southern half of the state. For the latest on the conditions, our reporter Letitia Wallace joins us from St Mary's. Good evening Letitia, what's it like on the east coast tonight? Joe, as you can see behind me, conditions are worsening here at St Mary's tonight with the rain settling in for the night. The Weather Bureau says the region can expect up to 120 millimetres of rain to fall by tomorrow afternoon, with all emergency services on standby ready to assist. Waves and strong winds wreaked havoc along the coastline this morning, the wild weather causing this boat to lose its mooring in St Helens. As the day went on, the rain became heavier and the winds picked up. Three SES personnel were called in as backup from Launceston. Uh, we're currently on standby, really. We are ready to go with whatever needs to be done. Big swells lashed the coast as commander, while crews spent the day sandbagging, preparing for potential flash flooding. Extremely heavy rain and high winds, uh, so it's certainly going to be uh, a pretty challenging time for us. But locals at St Helens consider it a mixed blessing, welcoming the long overdue rain. Everyone is having to buy water into their tanks and oh, that's just ridiculous at this time of year. So yeah, it's the wind we don't like, but the rain, yeah, bring it on. It's cold and windy, but we do need the rain, so they say. <laughs> We're very down on rainfall, so I'm very grateful there's some today. The Weather Bureau says it's one of the most significant rainfall events the East Coast has seen so far this year. We are expecting quite windy weather with this weather system. We are expecting damaging winds up to 100 kilometres per hour about the East Coast. Trees falling are a significant hazard and when the wind's actually blowing from the east or the southeast, um, it actually exacerbates or increases potential for this situation to occur. 
Locals are urged to be prepared with the worst to hit tonight. From this evening, we're talking about a 12 to 18 hour period, uh, so extended rainfall. Um, we urge Tasmanians to be vigilant from now right through into Saturday uh, as these condition, uh, conditions start to ease. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Police say a spate of car burglaries are partly to blame for a significant spike in crime across Tasmania in the past financial year. New data has revealed overall offences are on the rise, but police say they are taking action and already getting crime rates back on track. Tasmania police kept busy with crime on the rise. The Assistant Commissioner defending new data which reveals offences increased by 6% in 12 months, the highest rate in eight years. We fluctuate you know, around about 4,000 offences a year. So a 6% increase this year is on the back of a 4% decrease last year. So that trend does not alarm us at all. The department quietly released the annual report card yesterday, revealing significant spikes in assaults, robberies, burglaries and stealing. Northern District had a particularly high level of motor vehicle burglaries and a number of other offences, but again, through proactive strategies in this, this last few months, we've seen an over 50% downturn in the number of motor vehicle burglaries in the Northern District. We're also finding that we're doing a lot of non-core police functions, so we're supplementing Ambulance Tasmania, mental health, child support, so there are far more greater demands on police time than ever before. The government always talk about crime, they talk about law and order and they talk about being tough on crime, but it's pretty clear from these statistics that have got significantly worse over the last eight years that that approach is not working. The government says it's recruiting an extra 125 officers to boost frontline services. Already this year, rates are improving. We're seeing a 14% reduction in total crime offences already this year, and that's a great result. And that's come on the back of the work that each of the districts have done with task force focuses and the assistance of the community for those high volume crimes. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Police say it's still too early to determine the cause of a suspicious death of a man in Hadspen. Officers were called to a unit at the Rutherglen complex around midday. Detectives and forensic teams seal off the Hadspen unit. Inside, paramedics and officers made a grim find, the body of a 64-year-old man. Uh, we're doing a preliminary investigation at the moment. Uh, we're unable to ascertain the cause of death just yet. Concerned neighbours alerted authorities. Police interviewed those nearby today. It's understood the man lived alone. Uh, neighbours have indicated that there were some noises in the area last night. Uh, that's formed part of our investigation for sure. Uh, we're not suggesting there's anything sinister in that. They're also considering the possibility of natural causes. Uh, we do have an opinion right now which I'm not prepared to, to say. However, um, we want to make sure that we, we conduct a full investigation so uh, we can be sure, the family can be sure and the coroner can be sure. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. An accused murderer has been described as moody, challenging and unnerving by his former partner. Bradley Perkis is standing trial alongside Margaret Otto for the killing of a Risdon Vale tattoo artist in 2017. The trial into the alleged murder of Dwayne Davies into its fifth day. His wife and close friend jointly accused with his murder, both pleading not guilty. The former partner of Bradley Perkis today giving evidence via video link, telling the court their relationship that she'd tried to end was uneasy and challenging and that there were increasing issues with the alleged victim's frequent visits to her elderly property. Hearing she'd been advised the night of the alleged killing that Mr Mr Perkis was going to sort that issue out and had told her for her protection it would be better if she wasn't home. The Crown alleging Mr Davies was under the ruse of helping his friend inspect Harley Davison motorbikes to buy. Text messages read to the court from that night hearing he was urged to hurry up and get there because the sellers were close to arriving. Another witness saying she'd warn Mr Davies that plan sounded dodgy. Long-term friend Emma Jackson describing Dwayne Davies as her needy friend and someone who required a lot of attention. She said she'd offered him support numerous times because she knew he was experiencing financial strain as well as mental and physical health difficulties. The trial continues on Monday. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. 
Tasmanians shouldn't expect to have an AFL side by 2023 until the sport's peak body can guarantee a provisional licence. That's the message from Task Force Chairman Brett Godfrey, who visited the state today. It would seem you can't mention a Tasmanian AFL side without using the word parochialism, something the co-founder of Virgin Australia Airlines has become well aware of. You know, I'm, I'm from Queensland and we, we think we're more parochial than Tasmanians, but I'm starting to learn something uh, in my visits down here that we are second to you. In Hobart, offering tips to some of the biggest players in the state's business industry, Godfrey also felt obliged to give an update on Tasmania's contentious bid to get an AFL side, with the process gaining some recent momentum. This is different this time in that we've gone back to look at what happened in 2008. What were the issues? Can we address them? And the big issues we believe we can. With speculation rife about whether the team would be based in Launceston or Hobart, Godfrey has urged Tasmanians to put aside their own personal preferences and look at the greater good. Where local kids coming through, whether it's Launceston or Hobart, can actually see that that's what I want to be one day and I don't have to leave home and go to the mainland to do it. So. For me, I think that if, if, if people take a step back, they will see what the bigger picture is, and I, and I think most people do now. But with the United We Stand online petition, which was launched a week ago, still around 37,000 signatures short of its intended target of 50,000, the Tasmanian AFL Task Force chairman knows it's not going to be a quick or easy road ahead. We've got to be able to show and demonstrate the AFL that this is just not hard on the sleeve stuff. This has got to be a cold, hard business case. And if it can't stack up, I'm not going to put my name to it, and neither will any of the other members on the task force. Tom Cooper, 7 Tasmania News. Mona Aligned Project X has unveiled its latest attraction set to lure visitors back to the Huon Valley after the summer bushfires. A curious installation has been placed in the centre of Jeevston, one of the towns most affected by the shutdown of the Tahoon Airwalk. Taking a peek into this ordinary looking shipping container. Inside, a miniature world is revealed. This art display was a key feature of this year's Dark Mofo, now an unmissable sight in one of Jeeveston's main streets. This was hugely popular and loved in Dark Mofo. Uh, it's fantastic because it raises issues about um, riot, things that are difficult, and it enables a whole range of conversations around uh, social and cultural ideas. The town has suffered a downturn in visitors following severe bushfires in the region at the start of the year. Many local businesses have since been struggling. Evacuations, uh, bridge closures, it decimated our summer tourist season. But Dark Labs, the aftermath dislocation principle, will sit here for the next two months, set to entice more tourists. It just creates this buzz and it gets people legitimately moving around. So I think the Jeeveston community can expect a, a great increase in visitation over the spring and summer. Just to have such a significant piece of artwork um, installed in Jeeveston in a regional area is extraordinary and uh, the fact it's out front of my shop is fantastic. The shipping container will make its way through the Huon over the coming months. Ruby Kamane, 7 Tasmania News. The TSL and Lauderdale will be desperate to achieve what they have failed to do in recent years and get the better of North Launceston in a final setting. But the bookmakers will be favouring the red hot reigning premiers. For the past two years, Lauderdale's premiership hopes have been shattered by North Launceston, but the Southern Bombers can sense a turning of the tide. I think we're in a pretty good position at the moment. It's probably the best position we've been in to continue on, um, but I think we learn a lot um, and what it takes. Off the back of a hard-fought win over Glenorchy, Lauderdale will head to Windsor Park brimming with belief, and the side's coach knows they'll need every bit of it to get the result. We actually go up there really confident. We've played three games, one, two, um, and our group doesn't take a backward step, and I think everybody knows that, so we'll go up there and, and put our best foot forward and ha have a good crack at them. We've played them three times this year, so we've got a good look at them, but also we haven't played them where the conditions have been good, like they will be hopefully on Sunday. We've played them when it's been raining or windy or muddy. Fresh from the week off, the Northern Bombers are still strong favourites to go all the way in 2019, but the side is refusing to look past what's shaping up as a fierce and physical contest against an old bitter rival come 2pm on Sunday. You know, Lord, 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 they're going to be battle hard and they're going to be you know, ready to go and they've experienced their first final. So we're just going to be able to get up to speed as early as possible. The loser takes on the winner of tomorrow's clash between the Pies and the Blues, with the victor earning a spot in the decider. We've got a lot of guys that are going to be playing TCL finals for the first time, so that, that can't be forgotten. 
you know, obviously we've got a lot of guys that have played, but we've also got a lot of guys that haven't. So they're going to be bringing a bit of excitement as well. Meantime, Cricket Tasmania's new high-performance manager, Simon Inslee, says he's keen to put his own stamp on the organisation after making the switch from New Zealand following years at the helm of Auckland Cricket's high-performance program. Tasmania being the smallest state means that we have the best opportunity to, to have the best alignment between all the programs, between our community, between the board, um, to have the best cricket program, um, if not in Australia, in the world. Inslee official, officially begins in the role later this month, ahead of the men's and women's opening domestic season matches on September 22 and 23. Good evening. As expected, temperatures below average today. Hobart and Burnie 11 degrees, Launceston 13, Devonport a top of 12. King Island our high with 14 degrees. The highest rainfall was 42 millimetres of grey as the rain extended right across the state from the west and north. Flinders Island 13 today, Low Head and St Helens 12, Friendly Beaches and Grove 11, Strawn 10, Lyre Wind minus one overnight to a top of five this afternoon. Now, here's the cloud pattern as it developed over the state today, increasing that shower activity late this afternoon. Now, that cloud band stretches up to New South Wales. Cold, unstable air is over the Bight and the southern mainland. Most of the north of the country is clear. Tomorrow, a low will be to our northeast, directing an easterly airflow over the state. A cold front passes south of the Bight and the high is still over most of the mainland. Southeast to southwest winds reaching up to 35 knots over the north and east, easing during the day except from the northeast. Southeasterly winds inland turning southerly later. Now it's all happening of course folks, a severe weather warning still on for eastern Tasmania, heavy rain and damaging winds, a strong wind warning for all remaining Tasmanian coastal waters. We have a minor flood warning for the Huon and North Esk River, a flood watch for most other river catchments. Also a road weather alert for the east, central and south east for reduced visibility due to the heavy rain. Now into tomorrow we go and Hobart, rain and some heavy falls, 11 degrees, 11 the top for Medina with that same forecast, Launceston rain with wind easing, 13 the top, just 12 12 for Devonport, Lyawini minus one, three tomorrow and rainy, 12 the top for Burnie, Strawn showers easing later, 12 the high and nine the top for Marawar, while for St Helens tomorrow, 12 degrees, some heavy falls, heavy falls for Swansea, 11 and for Orford also on 11 degrees. On Sunday, more showers easing from the southeast with snow to 600 metres. A little more snow on Monday with showers clearing the north and east. And on Tuesday, showers mostly clearing to a fine partly cloudy day after an inland frost. A sunny 22 degrees forecast for Perth. A shower or two for Adelaide and Melbourne. Windy over New South Wales. Canberra just 11 degrees. Sydney 19. Sunny and 27 in Brisbane. And warm in Darwin. And after plenty of rain today, still showery over Hobart, 9 degrees, 8 in Launceston, 9 right now in Devonport. Joe, the weather is just speaking for itself at the moment. It certainly is. Thank you very much for that, Merv. <laughs> That's all from the news team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll join you with updates a little later this evening. Bye-bye.